Northern Oil Oil prices have rebounded, the company is now funded with more equity than debt, production is growing faster than almost all other companies in the Bakken, and the smart money investors and leaders of the company have demonstrated they are pushing to see the company and its common shareholders be successful. Furthermore, there are a number of ways I expect the company to receive further recognition over the balance of 2018 which should help drive the stock higher with expanded analyst coverage and increase in institutional holdings and the results it should produce for 2018, with adjusted EBITDA more than doubling to $300 million, up 107%. There is still work left, but a great deal of the risk and hard work has been completed and the stock is only up $1 to $2 so there is much more upside remaining. It also trades at the low end of EBITDA multiples using annualized EBITDA from other Bach and fast-growing producers. In November 2017, I wrote my first Seeking Alpha article for Northern Oil. And there has been a significant amount of favorable activity within the company and industry so I thought an update was due. When I penned the first article, written on November 23, 17 and published on November 26, 17, the stock was at $1.18, WTI was about $58 and the company needed to improve its balance sheet. Since this article, the stock is up 133% in 7 months, oil is up 18% driven most of what was outlined in my November 2017 article plus these related significant accomplishments, the company completed a significant recapitalization, changing its long-term capitalization from about 9% equity market cap and 91% debt par value, to 59% equity and 41% debt. See footnote 1, and a net debt to adjusted EBITDA ratio of over 6 to 1 in mid-2017 and it is now approaching a debt to adjusted EBITDA ratio of sub-3 to 1 near term, as described on the Q1-18 earnings call by the chairman. This is huge as it essentially removes the bare argument that the company was a serious default risk or a pre-packaged bankruptcy candidate and the commons would suffer. CEO Founder Returns, a third-generation oilman to help restore leadership to the company. Mr. Rieger was reported to have been instrumental in completing the bond exchange, capital raise and the Salt Creek acquisition. Joined by a new CFO, both are heavily incentivized with a restricted stock arrangement. As noted further in footnote, Rieger, CEO, is taking a $1 per year annual salary plus 240,000 restricted shares and has the chance to earn an additional 900,000 shares of restricted stock, which will still have a three-year vesting. These 900,000 shares are earned if the company hits EBITDA targets of $265 million to $325 million for 2018, TTM EBITDA of $171 million in Q1, 18 annualized EBITDA of $224 million, and a stock price hits of $2.60 to $3.20, average 20-day closing price in 2018. Based on my estimation in this article, the company will definitely hit $3.20 per share and at least $300 million in EBITDA. I really like the alignment of interests between the CEO and the common shareholders. New board and the smart money described in my November article help drive and support the recapitalizations and funding as I expected. Accretive acquisition closed in early June, Salt Creek, which will boost estimated annual production by 9%, see footnote 2, for highlights from the company's press release. They did not close until early June so it will not have a full quarter's effect until Q3, but with expected cash flow of $19 million per year, it would have a two-year payback, very good I'd say. How has the market responded to the company's and the industry's improvements? The stock hit a recent peak of $3 per share on the 12th of June 18 and is poised to go higher. I still think it will be a $6 stock in 2019. Sure, they have issued a significant amount of shares at relatively low prices, but this is largely changing the mix from debt to equity without changing enterprise value.
As calculated in footnote 1, total market cap is now $780 million, up from $112 million at the time of my November article, driven by 230M more common shares and 133% share appreciation. Bond prices moved from around 60% of par to 100% of par over the last seven months as the recapitalization healed the balance sheet. See bonds detail. Short interest is now very low, with the latest report on Yahoo Finance at 5M shares. WSJ is updated with May 31st 18 data at 5.6 or about 2% of total outstanding shares. Granted, the total number of shares has increased significantly, but the number of shares shorted is declining, not increasing, and a short interest of 2% compares very well to these e. C footnote. All confirming the premise outlined in my November article, leveraged oil and gas companies would pop the most from having smart money in them and moving to restructure the balance sheet. As stated in my opening paragraph, NAG is up seven times more than the rise of the spot oil price. Other factors hedging, bank requirements for the company call for hedging about half the company's production for about two years. As of the March 31st 1810Q, the company had hedged approximately 48% of the remaining projected production for 2018 on a barrels of energy, BO, basis with comparable hedges for 2019. Given we are now in a backwardation situation with future prices lower than current spot prices, as the company works through these hedges and replaces these hedges, the price should be higher. On June 22, 18, the average WTI price for 2019 is $63 based on the April, June, September and December CBOE future prices which is 20% higher than the 2019 hedges in place of $52.64 at March 31, 18. See the company's March 31, 1810Q, page 25 for its hedge position. Further improvement could be realized if backwardation subsides or moves to contango, the condition normally present in the oil industry where future prices are higher than spot process. For the company, hedging half of its production means it does not immediately enjoy increase in oil prices, but now that the oil price has increased, it gets a second lift as hedges are settled and new hedges are placed at higher prices. This stock is due to be soon recognized by these developing factors. 1. The significant recap is not yet reflected in many financial websites many investors use to screen or evaluate stocks. Here are some examples, my calculation of the trailing 12-month EBITDA for the company, Q2, 17Q4, 17, $115.10, full year of $144.7 million less $29.6 million for Q1, 17, Q1, 18, $56 million TTM, $171 million Q1, 18 annualized, $224 million, $56 million times 4, my full year projection, $300 million the data is not sufficiently updated on investor sites, many investors rely upon, and since the data is much better than the two metrics in red, it is fair to assume the company is not properly understood and may be passed over by potential investors. This will get cleaned up by the external finance sites over the next several months and aided by company updates and finance presentations. Analyst coverage is low but building, their investor relations website shows 4 firms, SunTrust appears to be the best known in the group but this is down from 11 firms in 2014. Based on Yahoo Finance, it shows 6 firms. The public backing companies with 40% or more last quarter revenue growth average 20 analysts. As energy stocks continue to return to favor by Wall Street, and with the improved balance sheet, growth and performance of this company, it is inevitable that the analysts following will grow with each bringing a new price outlook and attention to the stock. Stock price and float, institutional ownership of 5% which is extremely low. The company has already increased its share float and market cap substantially, and as the stock climbs above $3 and $5, we should see this ownership increase helping to drive up the price as investors look for blocks of stock rather than the small amounts many individual investors purchase.
A can take away capacity, Wikipedia has the back information is the second largest oil field in the US. A cheat sheet, top 15 oil producing states cheat sheet confirms this from a state perspective, listing North Dakota as the second largest state in oil production, well behind Texas. Considerable attention has been directed to the Permian Basin and its takeaway capacity issues over the next year which the Bakken is in much better shape with the new Dakota Access Pipeline. This will also direct investors' attention away from Permian to other fields that are not production-constrained and have better economics and minimal differentials. See other Seeking Alpha articles on the widening Permian differentials now $9 or higher, more than twice the back-end differentials that Northern Oil. The linked Platts article shows the market expects these Permian differentials to peak at $16 per barrel in November 2018. If the back-end keeps increasing its capacity, we may find the DAP is at capacity 6 to 18 months after the Bakken really feels the pinch which may mean back-end differentials bounce back at some future point. At least for the Bakken we have seen that rail has had the ability to move oil out of the region whereas the Permian is more constrained. See these two articles on Permian differentials, winners when differentials widen in the Permian, Platts research on Permian differentials oil prices and production will be very favorable for their Q2-18 results. WTI average prices before differentials were $48.24 for Q2-17 and now appear to be landing in the $66-67 range for Q2-18. That is a 38% improvement in pricing and on top of production increases of 30% plus improving differentials will result in a really strong Q2 which will be released in early August. See the link for average monthly WTI prices which shows Q2, 17 was the low quarter from the last year. Monthly WTI average prices, a word about dilution and the 2018 outlook so much has changed due to the recap that until the company reports Q2 and Q3 results, it is harder to understand or see what the effects of the recap will have on the income statement. Based on the company's 2018 guidance plus other disclosed events, I see the follow for 2018, production is up 33% to 28% midpoint of latest guidance contained in the Q1-18 earnings release plus the impact of Salt Creek which will have an annualized 9% lift on the overall company's production, for 7 months this equates to 5%. Gross price is up 42%. Q1's average price was up 21% to $62.89 before differential and derivatives impact. WTI closed on June 22, 2018 at $68.58. The average WTI price for 2017 for the company was approximately $45, and for those interested, the Q2-17 average price was the lowest for that year at $48.24 which will make for a very easy comparison for this upcoming quarter which will be around $67, which is up 39% in price alone. Natural gas was 16% of Q1-18 production and these prices have not run up like oil. Net price is up 24% after the impact of differentials and derivatives. Nearly half the company's production is hedged, so this temporarily reduces the participation when prices increase. Improved differentials lessen this impact some. The combination of price and quantity indicates net revenue will be up 65% for 2018 or $345 million in net revenues. 2017 production expenses were 71% of net revenues and the 2018 guidance shows a $2 per barrel improvement in production and G. This would leave income from operations at 32% of $345 million or $110.4 million. While the company had $23 million of interest expense for Q1, this should be down due to the recap, how much is not entirely clear, but based on my calculations of net debt declining 32%, I'll assume a 30% reduction for the last 9 months of the year for a total net interest of $71 million. This results in a pre-tax of $39.4 million, with $800 million in full reserved NOLs, this drops to the bottom line. With an estimated full-year 220M weighted average shares, this translates to 18 cents. 
the EBITDA approach is easier as it takes an enterprise approach combining debt and equity capital, so given the mix of long-term financing has changed significantly, this will not have a big impact other than to provide an improved multiple of EBITDA given the lower risk profile moving forward. Q1, 18 annualized adjusted EBITDA was $224 million, 56 M times 4, and based on the expected 35% growth in production for the full year plus higher prices plus 7 months of Salt Creek, I could easily see the full year adjusted EBITDA to be $300 million recognizing that annualizing Q1 captures a good part of the price increase in oil, average price realized per barrel was $62.89 before differentials and derivatives for Q1, 18. Applying a 9x multiple on this amount is a total enterprise value of $2.7 billion. Assuming net debt will rise by year by $150 million as the cash is used for growth in CapEx, this means the implied equity value is $1.95 billion. And as noted in footnote 1 below, the total shares outstanding will be approximately 300 M shares by the end of the year, so this equates to $6.50 per share, still above the $6 predicted in my November 2017 Seeking Alpha article. To support the EBITDA multiple, see these five companies with now a similar debt and debt-related risk profile, source Yahoo Finance June 23, 18, Oasis Petroleum, 10.90 Continental Resources, 10.55 Denbury Resources, 12.69 Carrizo Oil, CRZO, 8.12 EOG Resources. EOG, 13.08 average, 11.07 apply a 20% discount on NOG, given its value, following and track record are not as strong as these other companies and you have a 9x multiple, headed to 11 in 2020. So how does Northern Oil? I started with this source of Bakken Oil and Gas companies, it is not perfect but a good indicator, Bakken Oil and Gas operating companies it listed about 35 companies, but 11 or so are private and a few others are predominantly gas producers, so I focused on the remaining 20 or so oil producers. There were 7 producers with most recent quarter revenue growth of 40% per Yahoo Finance or more is listed below, so here are some key points from the above table, NOG has the third highest revenue growth for Q1, 18 at 78%. NOG over the last year is up 89%, 114% more than its revenue growth of 78%. This metric compares the 52-week stock appreciation to the most recent quarterly revenue growth year-over-year. Year. NOG compares favorably to the average high growth group which is at 132% overall. As mentioned earlier, it does not have much attention from Wall Street with 6 analysts compared to an average of 20. Using most recent AGI EBITDA as this captures much of the price movement in oil and then annualizing this to get a better idea of EBITDA run rate, I compared this annualized adjusted EBITDA to the stock's enterprise value to compute run rate multiples. NOG was third lowest at 6.7. There are a few other companies worth looking into based on the above, but I have followed NOG for three years and know it best. Note this shows enterprise value using gross debt, not net debt as calculated previously for NUG. Using net debt, the EV is $1,353, yielding a multiple of run rate EBIT of 6.0, a 20% discount to the other fast-growing Bakken producers. Conclusion Northern Oil just need to give it another 6 to 12 months to play out as we head to $6 per share and likely beyond. Footnotes 1. The company has had so many equity and debt transactions, the best starting point is the April registration statement and the cap table copied in below. From the company's registration statement dated 5 April 18 page S18, the company's market cap in late December was 64M shares times $1.75 or $112 million. Comparing this to net debt using the above actual column, one arrives at net debt of $898 million and total capitalization of $1,010 million. The split between equity and debt is 11% and 89%.
using the third, far right column above. After completion of this transaction, there was net debt of $618 million. Total shares increased to 264M shares. The company had four additional transactions on top of this, the first of which can easily be assumed, given the offering price of $1.50 and the fact the stock was trading well in excess of this within the 30-day underwriter green shoe option for over allotment, green shoe exercised by underwriters on the equity placement, not assumed in the pro forma exchange offering numbers above. This represents additional equity of $12.7 million on 8.8M shares. See cover of the 5th of April 18 registration statement. Salt Creek acquisition in early June using 6M shares using the closing price for the day before on the 5th of June 18 of $2.50 is $15 million. Additional conversion of $21 million debt into equity announced on June 12, 2018, 7.47M shares using the closing price of $2.81 for that day. Additional conversion of $23 million debt into equity announced on June 20, 2018, 2018, 8.36M shares using the closing price of $2.75 for that day. Total debt reductions from the above is $44 million and new equity is $71.7 million. Using the closing stock price on June 22, 18 of $2.74 per share and updating the 264M shares disclosed in the registration statement plus the 30.63M additional shares described in items 1 to 4 immediately above equals 294.63M shares which is a market cap of $807 million and adjusted net debt of $618 million for the above less $71.7 million or $546.3 million sums to a total market cap of $1,353 million of which 60% is equity and 40% is debt. 2. Salt Creek Acquisition Highlights from the April 26, 18 press release 3. May 31, 2018 Press release by Nagon CEO and CFO Hiring 4. Recent short interest declines While the short interest has increased some at May 31, 18 to 5.6M shares, it is noteworthy the reduction in shares shorted in earlier May as it reported results for Q1 and moved to complete its recap. Source WSJ Disclosure I am, we are long nog. I wrote this article myself, and it expresses my own opinions. I am not receiving compensation for it other than from Seeking Alpha. I have no business relationship with any company whose stock is mentioned in this article. Editors note, this article covers one or more stocks trading at less than $1 per share and or with less than $100 million market cap. Please be aware of the risks associated with these stocks.